Hey guys, it's Luis, your CS Tutor, and today we're going to go over casting and ranges of variables. So like we went over last video, all variables have a data type, and today we're going to go over how you can cast that data type into another one, so changing from one data type to another one, and also we're going to go over the range of values that those data types can hold. So computers use bits to store data, and these bits are what's going to give our data types different ranges of values. So let's talk about how it does that. Let's say we have one bit, and because bits are binary, they can only be represented by zeros and ones. So we can store two different values with one bit. So let's see how that increases with two bits. Right, as you can see, we can represent four values using two bits. So it increases by a power of two each time, and that's exponentially. So you can see how adding more bits lets us represent a larger range of values. So here I made a table of some commonly used data types in Java. So we have int with 32 bits, long with 64 bits, float with 32 bits, and double with 64 bits. And their associated ranges are right here. So as we can see, int and long are more in the whole number space. So those will only be whole numbers. And float and double represent floating point numbers. So those are going to be all the decimals between those. And so they're going to be used for way more precise tasks. And this is going to be really important when we go over casting, is the preciseness of float and double and how they differ from long and int. So now let's talk about casting. So the whole process of casting and converting data types kind of reminds me of the process of converting image files. Like in my free time, I like to make websites. And a big problem I have is that some files are really big to show on a website. So they take a long time to load. So I have to convert them into smaller files to actually load faster on the website. Uh, one example of this would be like PNG to JPEG. And whenever I do this, I lose quality in the image because PNG is a higher quality uh, file than JPEG. So there's a chance that you lose quality there. In Java, there's two different kinds of casting. There's implicit casting and explicit casting. Implicit casting is when Java does it for you. So that's pretty much when you have a lower quality data type and you're converting that into a higher quality data type. So you actually don't lose any precision or anything there. It just converts it for you. And explicit casting is when you tell Java to convert a higher quality data type to a lower quality data type. So it might make it less precise and you might lose some precision there. So that would be like going from PNG to JPEG, whereas implicit casting would be going from like JPEG to PNG, where you don't lose quality, it just uses a bigger container. So here are some examples of implicit and explicit casting. So in the implicit casting, these are the ones that Java does for you automatically. So from int to long or float to double. So in those, it does it automatically because int to long and float to double is an increase in bits. So you won't lose any precision there. Whereas in explicit, from double to int or double to float, you have a chance of losing some precision there. And now let's see this in action in the code editor. Yeah, so really quickly, uh, a way to check to see what the max value of whatever data type you're using you can just use the data type dot max value. Uh, so that's what I did here. I just printed out each value for int, float, long, and double. And here are the values so you can see them. So now I'll show you an, uh, an example of implicit casting. So implicit casting is really simple because usually Java just does it for you. So let's say we have an integer my int, which has that value. How do we cast that into a long? So let's make a new variable long. Let's call that one my long. And the way you would turn it into an int is just by setting it like that. So now my int has been casted into a long. And it does implicit casting because there's actually no chance of you losing any data that way. Because the long data type is much bigger than the int data type. So now we can print that out. And you can see that it's the exact same value. So now let's go over explicit casting. Yeah, so the way you do that is just by specifying the float here in parentheses. So when you're setting a float to my float equals to my double, before the my double, you would put parentheses float. 
to specify that you're doing explicit casting. So we're explicitly casting this double into a float, which loses precision, as you can see um, here. So our floating point value for my double is like really long, but then when we printed out my float, now it's really short. So that's how you lose some data when you're doing explicit casting from a larger data type to a smaller one. Um, so I hope you guys learned a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.